I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We are in the book of Joshua, where it talks about claiming your king for God. And as we come into this, or claiming your king for you, rather, that you might live a victorious Christian life. And as we come into this today, we've already seen a number of things from Je Joshua chapter 1. But today we want to see the challenge that Joshua puts forth to the people in Joshua 1, verses 10 through 15. So let's take a minute to read those verses, and then we will glean a few things from them today. Joshua 1, verse 10, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in and possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half the tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side Jordan, but ye shall pass before your brethren armed all the mighty men of valor, and help them until the Lord hath given your brethren rest, as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan, toward the sun rising. In the early part of this chapter, we have seen that Joshua has received his challenge from the Lord. And now, without hesitation, he goes to the people and he tells them that the time has come to take their land. First, he challenges the nation as a whole, and then he addresses a specific group within the nation of Israel. In verses 10 and 11 here, we see a challenge to readiness. And Joshua tells the people to get ready to go into Canaan and to claim the land. Oh, friends, these were the words that for 40 years they had been living and longing to hear. However, before they could go in, they had to get ready. God told them to prepare them some food. You see, the manna that they'd been eating in the wilderness was about to stop. God had told them that he would give them manna while they were in the desert, but it would cease when they entered into the promised land. You can see that in Exodus chapter 16 and verse 35. The manna was desert diet. Now they were about to move up to something a whole lot better. They were going into a land that was a land that was flowing with milk and honey. And what had worked in the wilderness would not suffice in the land of blessing. Oh, friends, the exact same thing is true today. Before we can enter our Canaan, we have to prepare for that land. In other words, the way that we live must change. The things that we feed on must change, and the entire scope of our lives must be altered to adjust to life in Canaan. The Christian life is a whole new set of principles that is totally contrary to anything that you lived before you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And that is why so many people never enter the victorious Christian life. They simply refuse to make the necessary changes to adjust to living in spiritual victory. Friends, the truth is, if you expect to walk in victory, you will have to learn to walk by an entirely new set of rules than what you have lived in before you get saved. In Romans chapter 6 and in verse 4, it says this, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dig by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So for the child of God, there is a newness of life that they walk in. They function by a different set of rules than they functioned by before they were saved. To see more about this, I encourage you to take the time to not only read, but to carefully study Colossians chapter 3 in your Bibles. The old man must die, and we must be alive to the new man in Christ if we are going to experience spiritual victory. So I ask today, what will you have to do to get ready for Canaan? What in your life has to die before you can truly live for what God wants? But then there's also a call to responsibility here in verses 12 through 15 of Joshua 1. You see, 
In these verses, Joshua addresses the tribes of Reuben and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh. These tribes had sought and they had gotten permission from Moses to remain east of the Jordan, just outside the promised land. The reason for the request? Well, you can see it in Numbers chapter 32. The land east of Jordan was a land that was good for raising cattle. Still, Joshua reminds them that they had promised to fight alongside their brethren until the land was conquered. And you see that promise made in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 12 through 20. So now these people are challenged to fulfill their promise and to aid the nation until victory was secured. You see, while these people settled in a land of prosperity, they were also in a land of danger. Years later, when the Assyrian army attacked from the east, these two and a half tribes were the first to go away into captivity. Oh, friends, there's a powerful lesson for us in these verses, and that is this, that we have literally multitudes of Christians who are just like these two and a half tribes. They are more concerned with making a living than making a life. The primary thing that motivates them is getting ahead in life. In other words, they are materially minded instead of being spiritually minded. These people represent those Christians that I would call borderline Christians. These are people who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, but that's about as far as they're willing to go. They will come to church when they want to come to church. They will give when they feel that they can afford to give. They will fight a battle now and again spiritually, but most often they're just seen playing around the edges, refusing to put God first in their lives. By the way, friends, it's that kind of Christian who is usually the first to fall in times of attack and in times of temptation. People who live like this say anything they want to, but the truth is obvious they have other gods in their lives to whom they have sold their souls. Friend, if you really love God today, then how about deciding to cross on over the Jordan River into Canaan? Make the decision to leave behind anything that is holding you back from serving the Lord like you should and say, I'm going to leave that and I'm going to cross the Jordan River and I'm going to enter into the land that God has for me. Oh, friends, you can stay where you're at and you can rationalize it all you want to, but the truth still remains. There are so many that are seeking and choosing gold and other things over God. Friend, listen very carefully as we close today. If you refuse to line up with the will of God for your life, then you can be assured of the fact that one day you will fall. You cannot play around the edge long before you fall out. Somebody asked me one time, in Acts, cha or Acts chapter 20, the story of Eugicus, somebody asked me one time, why is it that Eugicus fell out of church? Now we know the story. Bible says that Paul was long preaching and friends when the Holy Spirit of God says you're a long-winded preacher, you're a long-winded preacher. Eutychus was in the third story window, and he fell out the window. He fell asleep and fell out. You say, why did he fall out of church? I'll tell you why he fell out of church. Now, this is deep. Hang on. He fell out of church because there was more of him out the window than there was in the building. Now, you say, that's pretty simple. Why do you even say that? Uh, the reason I say that is this. There are multitudes that are falling out of church today because spiritually speaking, they're more out than they are in. Oh, friends, this is not the time to play games. This is not the time to mess around with hypocritical Christianity. This is the time to make sure that you are all in for the glory of God. Your family is depending on it. Your community is depending on it. You need it. Oh, friends, we need people that are sold out to Jesus Christ. Will you take the challenge that was put forth by Joshua? And will you make sure that you are dedicated to possessing this land of victory, walking in the abundant Christian life 
that God has for you. The world needs that kind of Christian. Are you one? And if not, will you take the steps you need to take so that you can be one? Have a great day.